topic is called building spirits. Building spirits. That's tonight's topic. Okay. Give me the book. Give me the book of Hebrews. Give me the book of Zechariah, actually. Give me Zechariah 12. Let's start here. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth, Go ahead. and formeth the spirits of man within him. And did what? And formeth the spirits of man within him. So the most High God is the one that forms the spirit of everyone within them. Every spirit, the spirit that you got, the character that you have, is the spirit of the most high God that was poured in you and within you. Read that again, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. And formeth, the Lord is the one that formed the spirit of everyone within them. That's the spirit of the Lord. Whether it's a good spirit or it's an evil spirit, the Lord is the one that has done that thing. The Lord is the one that has formed that spirit within you. Your character might be different, but it's still the same, the same spirit of the most High God. Whether it be for evil, whether it be for good. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Samuel. Let's get a, 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 a simple example of what happened to Saul. Okay, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. Read that. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. But the what? But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. This is the good spirit. The good spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. Go ahead. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him you see that part an evil spirit from the lord troubled him an evil spirit from the lord troubled him so the spirit of the lord that came upon saul it was a good and righteous spirit but the one when then when when he went off the spirit departed and guess what came upon him the evil spirit of the lord troubled saul you see that part go back to zechariah 12 verse 1 again Zechariah, excuse me, Zechariah chapter 12 verse 1, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. And formeth the spirit of man within him. Give me the book of Baruch 4 verse 17. Baruch chapter 4, no, no, Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 4 verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 17. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways. The spirit of the Lord. Be, hold on. The spirit of the Lord will walk with you by crooked ways. You understand? Come on. And, and bring fear and dread upon him. You see that thing? The spirit of the Lord, when it says it will walk with you by crooked ways, crooked ways is going to bring fear and dread upon you. Read on. And torment him with her discipline. The spirit of the Lord will torment you with her discipline. Read. Until she may trust his soul. Until the spirit of the Lord may trust your soul. Come on. And try him by her laws. And that's how you're going to be tried. That's the discipline. The laws is the discipline the house that the Lord is going to try you with. With his law. Read on. Then will she return the straight way unto him. You see that thing? Then the spirit of the Lord will return the straight way unto you. Meaning what? The Lord is going to open unto you what's really going on in this book. Come on. And comfort him. And show him her secrets. You see that part? So that's the good spirit that the Lord formed within man that is designed to build. You understand? The evil spirit that came upon Paul came upon Saul, that was not the spirit to bear. That was the spirit to destroy. You understand? Read that again, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 18. 
Then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. Come on. But if he go wrong, if he does what? She will, if he go wrong. Meaning you go the hell off. You stop keeping God's commandments. You break the laws. Really? She will forsake him. You see that thing? The spirit of the Lord will forsake you. Go ahead. And give him over to his own ruin. The evil spirit from the Lord is going to trouble you. That's what he's going to. That's what he's saying. And give him over to his own ruin. Meaning what? Because the, the evil that is in you, they're going to ruin. They're going to defile your spirit. You understand? They are going to defile you. Because now you have an evil spirit that has jumped on you. And the good spirit of the Lord has departed. That is what he's saying right there. Okay, go back to Zechariah 12, verse 1. Yes. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirits of man within him. And formeth the spirit of man within him. We just read, we just went over the spirit of the spirit that the Lord forms within us. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 7 through 8, 17 through 18. The spirit of the Lord that is formed within you will be will be going to try you. You understand? Until she may trust your soul and return the straight way unto you and comfort you and show you the Lord's secret. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 9. This whole thing is spiritual. Okay. This whole journey is a spiritual thing. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Read that. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Come on. Furthermore, we have had our fathers. No, no. Read that again. Read it right. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which, correct, which corrected us. Read. And we gave them reverence. We did what? And we gave them reverence. We gave them reverence. We honored them. Come on. Shall we not rather much shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Unto the Father of what? Unto the Father of spirits. The most high God live. is the Father of spirits. Unto the Father of spirits and live. The Father of spirits. That's why he formed the spirit within man. The spirit that he formed within man, that's the spirit he's making reference to, the spirit of wisdom. Okay, he is the father of spirit because the most high God deals with your spirit. He doesn't deal with what you look like, how you look. No, no. He deals with your spirit. What is your spirit like? Is your spirit in line with, with the good, the, the, the things that are put in this Bible for to build the nation of Israel? That is what the Lord is interested in. Okay, read that again. Verse 9. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live unto the father of spirits and live give me the book of numbers chapter 27 verse 16 you know what before you give me that give me first samuel give me first samuel chapter 10 verse 6 first samuel he says the most high god is the father of spirits that's why it says we know that the law is spiritual. He's the father of spirit. Okay? Give me that. First Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6. First Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. The what? And thou shalt. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. The spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. The same spirit. That, that the most high God formed man within him. He formed man. Give me that. Give me that thing again. Give me that in Zechariah 12. Read Zechariah 12, verse 1 again. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. And formeth the spirit of man within him. And formeth the spirit of man within him. The same spirit that the Lord has formed within man is the same spirit that we are reading about in the book of First Samuel. Go back to First Samuel chapter six. First Samuel chapter ten verse six. Read. 
and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. The same Spirit we just read about in Zechariah 12, verse 1, is the same Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord, because the Lord is the Father of Spirit. Come on. And thou shalt prophesy with them. Thou shalt prophesy with them. That them is the Spirit that the Lord will put upon this earth to do his will. Come on. And shall be turned into another man. That's what happens when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you. Because he is the Father of Spirit. You will be turned into another man. A man that the Lord created from the beginning before the world was. That's the man he's making reference to. You shall be turned into another man. Not the man that was born on this earth that is wicked and evil, but another man. The man that was formed from the beginning before the world was. That's the man he's talking about. That is the man that the Lord is going to use to build the 12 tribes of Israel and to build this earth, to set it in order. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers 27, verse 16. Numbers chapter 27, verse 16. Read that. Numbers chapter 27, verse 16. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh. The what? The God of the spirits of all flesh. The, let the Lord, the God of the spirit of all flesh. He is the father of spirit. Go ahead. Sit a man over the congregation. Because that spirit is man. The spirit is man. Come on. Which may go out before them. Which may go out. Be hold on. Which may go out before the congregation. Meaning what? To be a leader in Israel. Which you men, you brothers, you have been built up to become leaders in Israel. Right. And which may go in before them. And which may lead them out. You see that thing? Which may lead them out of captivity. Right. And which may bring them in. Bring them in into where? Jerusalem. Go ahead. That the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. You see that thing? That the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. That can only happen if the spirit of the Lord that the Lord has put in you is a good spirit that is going to be fit for the master's use. That's how the spirit of men are built on earth. In the spirit of Christ. Okay, to be able to lead the congregation of the nation of Israel. Read on. Verse 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit. You see that thing? A man in whom is the Spirit. A man in whom the Spirit of the Lord dwelleth. Read. And lay thine hand upon him. Meaning what? Pour your spirit upon him. That's what he's saying right there. Pour some of your spirit upon Joshua that he may be able to do what? He may be able to lead the nation of Israel into the promised land. That's what he said right there. Give me the book of John chapter 6, verse 63. John 6, 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. Wait. It is the spirit that quickened. It is the what? It is the spirit that quickened. It is the spirit of the Lord that quickened you, that you turn into another man. The same spirit that will try you by her discipline, you understand, and torment you with her discipline and try you by her law until she may trust your soul, that the Lord may be able to use you as a vessel to build the nation of Israel. Read that part again. John chapter 6, verse 63. Read. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit that changes you. The spirit of the Lord that changes you. The good spirit. The righteous spirit. Wait. Right? The flesh profits nothing. Sin will not profit you anything. That's what he's making reference to. Also. The flesh. Come on. Because this is not a fleshly thing. It's a spiritual thing. Wait. Right? The words that I speak unto you. The words that they Christ, are the, hold on, the words that Christ spoke unto us, the words, the Bible, that's the words that Christ spoke unto us, the Bible, come on. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are what? They are spirit. Come on. And they are life. They are spirit and they are life, because this is a spiritual thing. That's why it says it is the spirit that quickens you. 
the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you shall be quickened and turned into another man. The man that was, that was created from the beginning before the world was. That's the man he's talking about. That's the woman he's making reference to. Okay? Another man. A brand new spirit. Read that again. Verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Give me John 3, verse 5. John chapter 3, verse 5. John chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit. And of the what? And of the spirit. He says, Except a man be born. Except a man be born. Okay? That's when you are turned into another man. Except a man be born of water, which is the word of God, and of the spirit. That's the spirit of the Lord that we've been reading about. The same spirit of the Lord is the one that is going to turn you or quicken you and be turned into another man. Read that again. Verse 5. John chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So what is he saying right here? You will not be able to do anything that pertains to the kingdom if the spirit of the Lord is not working with you. It's not going to happen. Anything that pertains to the, to the building process of the nation of Israel, to the resurrection of the 12 tribes of Israel, to the gathering together of all the sons and daughters that were scattered abroad, far or near, if it's not done in the spirit of Christ, it shall not come to pass. Read it again. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jump down, read on, verse 6 now. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Mm -hmm. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You see that thing? Because the Lord is the father of spirit. If you are if you are spiritual, keeping God's commandments, the Lord will deal with you on a spiritual level, on another level, because that's a different dimension we are talking about here. Read that again, verse 6. John chapter 3, verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Because what? Give me that in Romans chapter 7. Romans 7 verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual. The laws of God is spiritual. God's commandments are spiritual. You know? But I am carnal, sold under sin. You see what he said? But I am carnal, sold under sin. Meaning what? In sin did my mother conceive me. The point we want to, we want out of this is says, for we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. Give me that in First Corinthians chapter two verse fourteen. First Corinthians two verse fourteen. First Corinthians chapter two verse fourteen. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. So now the natural man is the one that is born of the flesh. Go back to John 3, verse 6 again. John chapter 3, verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's the natural man. Because they are not spiritual. The only way you can be spiritual is if, if, if you're keeping God's commandments. That's what makes you spiritual. That's why it says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. They are two different things. Okay? Go back to First, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 again. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Wait. But the natural man receiveth not 
the things of the spirit of God. Because he's born of the flesh. He's sinful. His mind, he's carnally minded. He is carnally minded. Okay? That's why he uh, is uh, unable to understand the things that are being said. Give me that in Romans 8 verse 6. He will not be able to understand spiritual things because he's sinfully minded. He's born of the flesh. Okay? Romans 8 verse 6. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. You see that thing? For to be carnally minded is death. His mind is dead. His spirit, was, his spirit is dead. The only time when he will be able to descend spiritual things is if he's born of the spirit. The laws of God is what's going to bring him back to life. That's what he's saying right there. Come on. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see that thing? To be spiritually minded. To be spiritually minded, that means you're born of the spirit. You what? You think spiritual things. That's why he says, but to be spiritually minded, meaning your thought process is about the laws of God. Your thought process is about meditating on, meditating on God's commandment. He says, it's life and peace. Next verse. Verse 9. But ye, verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You see that thing? The carnal mind is an enemy against God. So how can he... How can he speak spiritual things? That's why and the natural man will not be able to receive the things of the spirit because he's carnally minded. This thought process is not about God's laws. It's about how it looks. That's the carnally minded brother. The carnally minded sister. They don't think about the laws of God. They don't, they don't use the laws of God to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. The way they think, what they eat, how they eat, all of that, they don't use God's laws to discern the things that they do because they are carnally minded. They are not spiritually minded. Okay, read that again, verse 7. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Come on. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You see that thing? The reason why it says it's enmity against God is because it is what? It is not subject to the law of God. The, the carnal mind will not subject itself to God's law. To subject yourself means to humble down and do what the laws of God say. If the law says, do it, the law says thou shalt not, your, the carnal mind will make excuses. The spiritual mind will get it done. That's the difference. Okay? Read that again, verse 7. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You see that thing? Now it says, because it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. It can't be. It cannot be subject to the law of God. Therefore, it will not be spiritually minded. It will always be carnally minded until the spirit of the law comes upon that spirit to repent. So he can be spiritually minded. Go ahead. Verse 8. But ye are not in the flesh. But Read in the again? spirit. No, no. Verse 8. Verse 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You see that part right there? They that are in the flesh cannot please God. They cannot please the most high. They are in the flesh. They are, they are carnally minded. They are carnally mad. They cannot please the most like God. Go ahead. Verse 9. Verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh. He says, he, what did he in say? The Hold on. Read Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh. But ye are not in the flesh. But ye are not in the flesh. Come on. But in the spirit. But in the spirit. Because the Lord is the spirit, the God is the spirit of all flesh. He is the father of spirit. So if you are moving, you are walking in the flesh, the Lord is not your father at that point. He is only going to be your father if you are what? You are spiritually minded. As long as you are currently minded, the most High God is only the spirit, is only the father of spirit. Those that are born of the spirit, keeping God's commandments, he is their father. But if you are not keeping God's commandments, you belong to Satan. Okay, 
And if you are rebellious against God's laws, you belong to Satan. You are double-minded, you belong to Satan. Until you subject yourself to the laws of God, you can be spiritually minded. Read that again, verse 9. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Mm -hmm. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. You see that thing? The spirit of God will dwell in those that are born of the spirit. Read. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see that part? That's, the, that's exactly what I, what I was explaining. It says, read that again. Read that again. Now, if any man be what? Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, mm -hmm. he is none of his. You see that thing? You don't belong to the Father. You belong to Satan. That's what it is. He is the father of sin. Those that are what? Those that are spiritually minded. Those that are about the father's business. But if you are carnally minded, you are none of his. You belong to Satan. Okay? Watch this. We don't keep in with the 10. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. You see that thing? If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Because guess what? If you come into this truth, you repent, keep God's commandments, you maintain keeping God's commandments. That what? That fleshly body must be put to death. That fleshly man must be put to death. The one that is carnally minded has to die. Read. Really? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead of sin, is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. You see that thing? The spirit, the spirit is life because of righteousness. What brings you back to life is the righteousness of the Lord. You are keeping God's laws. That's what brings you back to life. And you become that spirit that the most High God will deal with you. Because he is the father of spirit. As long as you are carnally minded, you are none of the Lord. You don't belong to the Father. You belong to Satan until you repent. Watch this. Give me Zechariah 4 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, You know what? Hmm. This is the word of wait, the Lord. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to verse 6. Go back to Romans 8. Something I want out of, I want out of that chapter. Romans 8, read verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Read. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. You see that thing? It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, then him he has took about the most like God. The most like God spirit raised up Christ from the dead. If that same spirit dwell in you, come on. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read that again, verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Right. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies shall what? by his spirit shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Shall quicken your fleshly mind. Shall quicken your fleshly mind. All this John 53. We coming back. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. It is, it is the spirit that quickens. The spirit of the Lord is what quickens you. It's what's going to turn you into another man. Then the father of spirit will be your father as well. Go back to where he was at. Romans 8 verse 10. I mean Romans 8 verse 11. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Come on. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies Ray. by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So the most high God, the same spirit that he used to resurrect Christ from the dead, he, the same spirit he's going to use to quicken your fleshly mind. If you're carnally minded, you allow the most high God to quicken you, you will be quickened. 
okay, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. At that point, once you are quickened, the spirit of the Lord will dwell in you. But as long as you are not quickened, the spirit of Satan will dwell in you. Satan will be running the show. He'll be the driver, okay? You can go back to 1 Corinthians now, chapter 2, verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolish, for they are foolishness unto him. They are what? They are foolishness unto him. You see that thing? The carnally minded brother, the carnally minded sister, they will not be able to what to receive the things of the Spirit of God. Because they are foolishness unto him. It's a foolish thing. You mean to tell me I need to grow my beard to get the kingdom? Yes. But the carnally minded brother, he's going to think that's foolishness. He's not going to look at that as power. He's going to see that as a foolish thing. Because why? He's what? He's what? He's not spiritually minded. He's carnally minded. That's why he cannot discern it. Read that again, verse 14. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. For they are foolishness unto him. They are foolishness unto neither him. Come can, on. Neither can he know them. Mm -hmm. Because they are spiritually discerned. Because the only way you'll be able to understand the things of the Spirit of God, you must be spiritual. You must be keeping God's commandments so you can discern spiritual things. Because he is the father of spirit. So likewise, we are spiritual when we keep his commandments. And we will be able to discern spiritual things, see spiritual things, and hear spiritual things. And be able to discern what's going on. That is what he's saying. But at the natural man will not be able to do that. Because when you keep God's commandments, you vibrate at a different frequency. When they don't keep God's laws, they also vibrate at different frequency. But it's not the frequency of the law. Is the frequency of Satan. That's the signal that they operate with. You understand? Read on. But he that is spirit, but he that is spiritual judges all things. Come on. Yet he himself is judged of no man. But of the Lord. Read on. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? No one. But we have the mind of Christ. Because the mind of Christ is this Bible. The mind of Christ is this Bible. So he, if you are spiritual, you're going to be able to judge spiritual things. You're going to be able to see things happening in the world around you. Guess what? Because you have the spirit of the Lord working with you, you'll be able to discern the spirit behind the actions and the behaviors and the conduct, the events that are happening around you. You'll be able to discern the spiritual things behind you. But if you're not spiritual, you will not be able to discern because you are carnally minded. You're not going to see what's going on. Okay, jump up to verse 12. First book, Corinthians 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. You see that thing? But it says, now we have received not the spirit of the world. You know? But the spirit which is of God. But the spirit which is of God. Come on. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You see that thing? Because it says, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The things that are freely given to us of God. Give me James chapter 1. Okay. We did, we did not receive the things of the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world is the spirit of sin. The spirit of Satan. Okay? That's the spirit of the world. Give me the book of James chapter 1 verse 5. Read that. The book of James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to all men liberally. You see that thing? Freely. That gives to all men liberally. Freely. 
These are the things that are freely given to us of God. Read. And upbraid it not. Read. And it shall be given. And, and it shall be given him. The wisdom of the Lord will be given to you if you ask of it from the most high God. In sincerity and in truth. Not with a double mind. Go back to where he was at. First Corinthians 2 verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. Read. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Mm -hmm. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Because the spirit of God is going to be able to help us to discern the things that are freely given to us of God. Read. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. You see that thing? But Hold on. It says, which things also we speak, not in the words, is not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. We don't speak the things that man's wisdom teaches, but we speak the things that the Spirit of God teaches, which is what? The good news, the gospel, okay, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. That is the, that, that's the wisdom that God has given us to teach, not the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world has not given this to us, but the spirit of the most high God. Read. Really? But which, First book Corinthians 2 verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with, with spiritual. You see that thing? So the things that the Holy Ghost teaches, which is the spirit of Christ, is able to help us to what? To compare spiritual things with spiritual. What is the spiritual thing? The spiritual things is the laws of God. The spirit that he's talking about, he's talking about the spirit of Satan. We are able to see through it. We are able to see the spirit behind the things that are happening around us. We are able to compare it. We are able to see this is not the spirit of the Lord right here. That's the spirit of Satan. Okay? We can be able to, because you know spiritual things now. What are those spiritual things? God's laws. God's laws will be able to tell you that thing right there, the spirit there, that's the spirit of Satan right there. Because your eyes are open. You can be able to see that that's the spirit of Satan. The spirit of the Lord will teach you that. Okay? That's what he's saying right there. The spirit of the Lord will teach you that. Give me that in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. He says, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 1 John 4, verse 1. First book of John, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Really? Beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't believe every spirit. Go ahead. But try. But try the spirits, whether they are of God. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. How do you try the spirits? You try the spirits by spiritual things. You try the spirits by the spiritual things. What are those spiritual things? The laws of God is those spiritual things. You will try the spirit, whether they are of God. Okay, come on. But try the spirits. Whether they are of God. That's how you compare spiritual. Hold on. That's how you compare spiritual things with spiritual. The way you try the spirit, whether they are of God, you try, you compare spiritual things with those spirits. The, the spirit that they move in, you compare the spirit that they move in versus the spirit of the Lord. That's how you try. That's how you try or compare those the spiritual things with those spirits. Okay. That's what he's saying right there. Give me Zechariah 4 and 6. The book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6. Read. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might. Not by might. Not by might. I mean, not by your might. Because if you want to win this fight by your might, you are carnally minded. Okay, come on. No, by power. No, by your power. Neither by your power. Really? But by my spirit, uh -huh. saith the Lord of hosts. You see that thing? But by the spirit of the Lord, 
this is how this war is going to be won. Because this is a spiritual war. We must fight it with spiritual things in order for us to understand the things that are freely given of us of God, given to us of God. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 7, verse 7. Read. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. And what? And understanding was given me. So now we've been talking about the spirit. He says, the spirit that quickens. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. King Solomon is going to take it a step further. The spirit that we've been talking about, that's why the name of the class is called Building Spirit, because this is a spiritual thing. And the father of spirit, he builds spirit. Okay? Read that again, verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. Mm -hmm. I called upon God, Come on. and the spirit of wisdom came to me. You see that thing? That's the spirit right there. That's what that's the spirit we've been talking about. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. That's the spirit he's talking about. The way you are able to compare spiritual things with, with spiritual is because you have the spirit of wisdom. That spirit of wisdom gives you understanding of why things are, how things are, and what. The what, the how, and the why. That's the spirit of wisdom. Spiritually, you can discern the what, the how, and the why. Spiritually, because you've got the spirit of wisdom. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Okay. Wherefore I pray, and understanding was given me. Read. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. And the spirit of wisdom came to me. Give me Sirach 1 and 1. Ecclesiastical. We're going to deal with the spirit of wisdom. That is what? The spirit of wisdom that builds spirit. The spirit of wisdom is what builds spirit. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 1. Read. All wisdom cometh from the Lord and is with him forever. Read that again, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 1. All wisdom cometh from the Lord. All wisdom. And all, all wisdom. The spirit of wisdom comes from the Lord. All wisdom comes from the Lord. Read on. And is with him forever. The spirit of wisdom. All the wisdom is with the most High God. And it comes from him and none else. Okay, jump down to verse 4. Wisdom hath been created before all things. You see that thing? Wisdom was created before all things. Right. And understanding of prudence from everlasting. The understanding of prudence is the understanding of wisdom. The understanding of wisdom from everlasting, meaning it does not have a beginning. Wisdom was created before all things and the understanding of prudence. Prudence means wisdom, okay, from everlasting. You cannot even number when it was created. And the understanding of this wisdom comes from everlasting. You cannot even number it. You cannot pinpoint when it started. It started from everlasting. That's what Sirach is saying right here. Read. The word of God, most high, is... The foundation. No, uh -huh. no, no. Read that again, verse 5. The, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 5. The word of God, the most high, is the fountain of wisdom. Come on. And her ways are everlasting commandments. So what you want to understand here is this. is that the word of God, most high, is the fountain of wisdom. But what I want you to see is that and her ways are everlasting commandments. Remember in verse 4. Read verse 4 again. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 4. Read. Wisdom 
had been created before all things mm -hmm. and the understanding of prudence from everlasting from everlasting so the wisdom of the most High god will be able to build you forever until you die or until the lord returns it only gets better in time it just keeps getting better and better you understand based on how much you, the work you put in you study you apply you seek counsel that's why I told you, I told you, all of you, I'm not running after anyone for counsel. Because guess what? A lot of you, you want to be spoon fed, you want to be baby, you want to be baby. I'm not doing that. Because if you want, give me Sarah 636, 37, Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 37, watch this. Nobody's going to be baby in this truth. I need you, everybody, to understand that. Because I've been doing that, and guess what? You will be expect. you keep expecting it. You don't move a finger. You don't want to do nothing. No, I'm not doing that. If you take this truth seriously, guess what you will do? You will seek counsel. You will ask questions. Because many of you, you're expecting me to ask you which chapter you at. That's not my job to do. Your job is to come and ask the questions because you study. You are applying. You want to understand. I'm not following anyone around. Read what you got. There are six thirty-seven. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 37. Read. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord. Come on. And meditate continually in his commandments. Come on. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. If the Lord is going to give you wisdom at your own desire. If you desire it, guess what you're going to do? Your, your hunger, your thirst will determine how much the Lord gives unto you. But if you're slothful, you understand, you want to be baby, guess what? The Lord will give you wisdom according to that. That's what the Lord is. That's what the scripture is saying. Okay? I need everybody to understand that thing. Watch this. Go back to where it was at. There are chapter 1. There are chapter 1, verse 4. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 1, verse 4. Read. Wisdom has been created before all things, and the understanding of prudence from everlasting. And the understanding of prudence from everlasting. That means the wisdom of the Most High God is infinite. It's everlasting. You cannot be able to contain it. So your desire also can be, it can what? Your desire is not limited. Your desire is not limited, okay? The same way your desire is not limited, the wisdom of the Lord is not, because he says he will give you wisdom which is everlasting at your own desire. Your desire is unlimited. That's why wisdom is unlimited. That's why your desire also will be unlimited because the more you desire it, the more the Lord will keep pouring it into you. But a lot of you, you don't think about it like that. You understand? You don't think about it like that. Watch this. Give me, um, read verse 8 now. Sirach chapter 1, verse 8. Read that. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon the throne. Read that again, verse, five, verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 8. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. You see that thing? There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. He's wise and he's greatly to be feared. Okay, come on. He created her. The her is wisdom. He created wisdom. Come on, from what? He created wisdom before all things. Come on. And saw her. Uh -huh. And numbered her. Only the Lord can number wisdom. Nobody can do it. Only he can do it. Read on. And poured her out upon all his works. Read that again. Read that again. Read that again verse 9. The, the book of Ecclesiastes is at 1 verse 9. He created her and saw her and numbered her. And poured her out upon all his works. Upon all his creation. Upon all his creation. It says, he created her, that's wisdom, and saw her, and numbered her, and poured her out upon all his works. The work is, not, is making reference to his creation. Okay, come on. She 
is with all flesh. She is what? According. Hold on. She is what? She, she is with all flesh. She is with all flesh. The wisdom of the Most High God is with all flesh. Hold this. Give me Joel 2 27. Joel chapter 2. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 27. And he, you know what? Hmm. Wait, wait. Yeah, keep reading. Verse 27. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. Wait. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Come on. And that I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. And none else. Read. And my people shall never be ashamed. You see that thing? This verse right here is why the black woman was crying because she did not believe this is in the Bible. Read that again, verse 27. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. Come on. And he shall that I am in the midst of Israel. Mm -hmm. That I am the Lord your God. Come on. And none. And my people shall never be ashamed. You see that thing? And my people shall never be ashamed. God's people is the Israelites who God is in the midst of. God is in the midst of us. He's only in the midst of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. Verse 28 is the point we want to get to. But I wanted to read verse 27 so we can understand what we, have, what we just read in Sirach chapter 1, verse 10, when it says, she is with all flesh. Verse 28, come on. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh you see that thing he says it, sh it shall come to pass this is future prophecy that's what's going on right now the all flesh is talking about the nation of israel that god is in the midst of read that again verse 28 the book of joel to verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh you will pour his spirit upon all flesh come on And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Come on. Your old men shall dream dreams. Mm -hmm. Your young men shall see visions. You see that thing? So when it says he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, it's talking about the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel that God is in the midst of. Go back to Sirach chapter 1, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 10. She is with all flesh she is according. What? She is with all flesh. The wisdom of the Most High God is with the 12 tribes of Israel. She is with all flesh. Read. According to his gift. According to what? His gift. According to his gift. Because the wisdom of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom is the gift of the Most High God. The spirit of discernment is the, is the gift of the Lord. So what we're reading here, the Lord gave wisdom to us as a gift. You understand? And that gift is to be used for the building up of the 12 tribes of Israel. The spirit that the Lord will send in this truth. You understand? Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. She is with all flesh according to his gift. Right. And he had given her to them that love him. You see that the Lord will only give his wisdom to those that love him because the Lord takes pleasure in those that fear and love him in sincerity and in truth. Read that again, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 10. She is with all flesh according to his gift. According to his what? And he, according to his gift. According to his gift. According to his gift. Read on. Come on. And he hath given her to them that love him. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 21. It says, She is with all flesh according to his gift. Because the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, was given to us as a gift so we may be able to do what? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 21. Read that. 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 21. Really? Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her. The her is wisdom. He says he could not otherwise obtain wisdom. Go ahead. Except God gave her me. Except what? God gave her me. Except the Lord gives you that wisdom. You know? And that was a point of wisdom also mm -hmm. to know whose gift she was. You see that thing? The point of wisdom is for you to know whose gift she was, she is. The gift, wisdom is a gift from the most high. Okay? He says that was the point of wisdom. The point of wisdom is for you to know whose gift she was or whose gift she is. Right? I prayed unto the Lord mm -hmm. and besought him. And with my whole heart, I said, Read chapter 9, verse 1. God of my fathers and Lord of, my, of mercy. No, no, you're, who, not read, you're not reading that right. Okay, read verse, nine, verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. O God of my fathers mm -hmm. and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word. You see that thing? The Lord made all things with his word. Read on. And ordained men through thy wisdom. Stop right there. Read that part again. Wisdom, wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 2. And ordained men through thy wisdom. The Lord is going to set you up through his wisdom. Nobody is going to be set up in Israel if the Lord has not set them up through his wisdom. Because the reason why you'll be, judge, you'll be a judge in Israel is because the spirit of the Lord is working with you to do, be able to, to set the men and women in order. That is what he's saying here. He says, and ordain men through thy wisdom. The Lord ordain or set up men through his wisdom. You understand? To be able to guide the people. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. Read that. Second book of Chronicles. Chapter 1, verse 7. Read. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I, what I shall give thee. Read. And Solomon said unto God, I was showed great mercy unto David my father and has made me to reign in his stead. Mm -hmm. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established. Come on. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. So now King Solomon is, is rehearsing what the Lord has done, uh, has done for him. You understand? That's why he's referencing his father. He set up his father. Now he's taking his sitting on his father's feet. You understand? He says to Gia, thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Because the nation of Israel, no man can number. Okay? Read on. So what is Solomon doing? He's acknowledging his responsibility that has been put upon him. That's what I want you men to do. I want you men and women too to understand the responsibility that has been bestowed on you. Because some of you, a lot of you, if I let me put it like a lot of you, you are still in La La Land. You don't understand the responsibility that is before you. That's why you're still expecting to be chased around for cancer. I'm not doing that. That means you don't, you, you, you don't want to be an asset to your people. That means you don't want to be an asset to your people. You are playing games. Okay, read that again. Verse 8. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. And Solomon said unto God, I was showed great mercy unto David, my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. Read. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Read. Give me now wisdom and knowledge mm -hmm. that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this thy people. That is so great. You see what he's saying? He understood his responsibility and he said, you know what? 
I'm not going to be able to do this with my might, nor, but, nor through my power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, I'll be able to get this work done. That's why the first thing he asked for, he understood the responsibility that sits before him. Then he prayed to the Lord to give him not money, not power, but he asked the Lord to give him wisdom and knowledge that he may be able to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. He understood the responsibility. He, he decided to go and seek counsel from the Lord to be able to give him the tools he's going to need to be able to guide the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, come on. Jump down to the and 12. Jump down to the God. 12. Hold on. Read verse 12. Read verse 12. Second Paul Chronicles chapter 1, verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. The reason why King Solomon has given this wisdom is because that was that is that was his priority. Okay. His priority was to his people. His priority was to set the nation of Israel in order so we can be what? We can be glorious as ever on this earth, as it is written in the Bible. He understood that he was about nation building. See, that's why he asked for the things that he asked for, to be a wise and a righteous judge in Israel. That's why he's known for his wisdom, because that's what he prioritized in his life. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay? Go back to where was that? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8. I mean, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 2. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 2. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 9, verse 2. O God of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word, no, and ordained true. man, and ordained man through thy wisdom. You see that thing? And ordained man and set up men and set up leaders through thy wisdom. The Lord sets up leaders using his wisdom. That's, how, that's why men are set up through the wisdom of the Most High God. But what I am noticing is that some brothers, they still have that spirit of a woman on them. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. When there's a problem, right, and you get checked, and you're going to be explaining to me, no, say, you know, because if I don't want to, with the minute they hear that, you're not ready to be a leader in Israel. I'm going to tell you straight up. Because when I check you about something, what is a spiritual man supposed to do? Because you are carnally minded. A carnally minded brother, here's what they're going to do. They're going to give me a whole song and dance what they are doing or what they are not doing. I don't want to hear that because you are not in the spirit. You are not moving in the right spirit. You're supposed to sit down and examine yourself. But you're not doing that. Instead, you're going to say, no, but I think, no, say, you know, what? listen, you know who you are. You know what I'm talking about. You know who you are. So you get it together. I don't want to hear that stuff. Okay, because as if you're if you're spiritual, you're gonna descend spiritually. What's going on? You're gonna sit down and examine yourself and say, you know what? Yeah, let me really look at the spiritual. But because you have, you're still moving in that spirit of you hate correction, but you want to be a leader in Israel. That doesn't make any sense. You cannot say I want to be a judge in Israel, but when judgment comes, when correction comes. You still have to give me a whole paragraph of what you think or no. Actually, what's going on is because I have not, I'm not. Listen, sit down, examine the situation spiritually, not because of how you feel. Because I've seen that. I've already dealt with that this week. Okay? I don't want to, I don't want that anymore. I want you to sit down and really sit down and examine. Search through the scriptures. Look at the situation spiritually. Don't react. Because when you react, you move. Not You're not moving in the spirit. You are moving carnally because you are carnally minded. You cannot discern spiritually what's being said to you. Okay? Read that part again. Verse 2. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 2. And ordain man through thy wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. You see that thing? And ordain man through thy wisdom. Okay, that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. Next verse, watch this. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. Mm -hmm. And execute judgment 
with an upright heart. So the man that the Lord will set up through his wisdom, their job will be to, to what? To set up order in the world. Okay? Give me that in John 18 verse 20. And ordain men through thy wisdom to do what? To order the world according to equity and righteousness. These are these. What, what is this called? This is not a democracy. My God, this is a scepter of righteousness. Okay, it's a scepter of righteousness, a theocracy. Read what you got. John 18, verse 20. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. You see what he's saying? Go back. Now we know the world is the world of the Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel. So that's first and foremost. Once the 12 tribes of Israel is in order, our job is to set the whole earth in order. Okay, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 3. Again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 3. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. You see that thing? Order the world according to equity and righteousness. Notice the word he's using. Equity and righteousness. Not according to politics or religion or democracy. No. Equity and righteousness. Meaning justice and righteousness. And order the world. Your job, brother, is to order the world. Is to order to set the, 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 the 12 tribes of Israel in order through the wisdom that the Lord has bestowed upon you. And you're not going to be able to receive that wisdom if you cannot follow counsel. You understand? You will not be able to receive it because you think, a lot of the time, let me tell you those brothers that have problems that are going to cause problems in the body if they don't repent from the sin. When you think you are too smart, you are smarter than everyone else, you are too clever, those are the spirits you need to really watch out for. Because those spirits, they are very dangerous spirits. They are very carnal. You understand? They worship their own mind. They don't worship the one true God. They worship their own mind. When I see brothers like that, I will watch you because I know that's exactly what you're going to be. You're going to be deceiving brothers and sisters because you think you're too smart because your smartness is better than this Bible. I watch those brothers like that. I watch sisters like that because I know these are the ones that are going to bring heresies and doctrines and confusion in the body. I'm going to watch you like a hawk. Because we have to look out for the body. We have to look out for the children. We have to look out for the brothers and sisters and to protect the flock. I need you brothers to understand that thing because you are the leaders. You are the upcoming leaders in Israel. Okay? Another characteristic. Brothers that um, they think they are smarter than those that have been set over them, those are the ones that you must watch as well. Because they are not going to follow counsel. They're gonna, they, they are going to be self-willed because their mind is too wide. Their mind is too high up for them to take counsel. Those are the people you also need to watch. Okay? Read that again. Verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 3. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. And execute judgment with an upright heart. So now, this is what King Solomon is praying for. Why? Because remember, he understands that the Most High God is the Father of Spirits. And the Spirit of the Lord is to build spirits on earth to be able to do spiritual things to raise up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what this movement is about. You understand? Next verse. Verse 4. Come on. Give me wisdom. That sitteth by thy throne mm -hmm. and reject me not from among thy children. You see that thing? This is what he's asking for again. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne, because that's where the wisdom of the Lord sits. By the throne of the most high God. On the right hand of the on the right hand side of God, the right hand of the majesty on high. That's Christ. Christ is the wisdom of the Lord. Okay. Read that again, verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 4. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne. Read. And reject me not from among thy children. Come on. 
and reject me not from among thy children. Next for verse. I, thy servant and son, for I, thy servant and son of thine handmaid, am a feeble person. Come on. And of a short time. You see that thing? We are fee- Hold on. We are feeble, meaning we are weak. We are feeble and of a short time. Because guess what? Our time is limited on this earth because we are mortal men. You understand? That's why the spirit of the Lord, go back to Romans chapter 8. So we don't forget that thought. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans 8, verse 11. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You see that thing? It says, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. He shall quicken our mortal body. That's why go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 5. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 5. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 5. For I, thy servant and son of thine handmaid, am a feeble person Mm -hmm. and of a short time. We are feeble and too young. Hold on. We are feeble and we have a short time upon this earth. That's why we are always wanting things to move quicker because we have a short time. You understand? We are feeble, we are weak, and of a short time, we are mortal men. That's why the spirit of the Lord must quicken our mortal body. Raise. And too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. You see that thing? We are too young for the understanding of judgment and law. Understand it. We are too young for the understanding of judgment and law because the wisdom of the Lord is everlasting. Is from everlasting. We are too young for the understanding of the wisdom of the most high God that ordained men to set up what? To set up structures and kingdoms. Who does that? The Lord does that thing. The Father of Spirits he sets up those spirits to do those things. Okay? Watch this. Keep, keep reading. Verse 6. Read verse 6. For through a man be never so perfect. No, no. Among. No, no. For though, for though a man be never so perfect. Read that again, read it right. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 6. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, mm-hmm. yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. You see that thing? If the wisdom of the Lord is not working with you, you will come to naught. You shall be nothing regarded. That's what he's saying. For though a man be never so perfect, among the children of men. You can be perfect among the children of men, yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. You will not be remembered. That thing that you are doing will come to naught, and you will come to naught, because the wisdom of the Lord is not with you, laboring with you. Jump down, jump down to verse 8. Watch this. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. Thou has what? Thou has commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. You see that thing? It says, thou has commanded me to build, to build, to build. That's why tonight's topic is called building spirits. King Solomon was commanded to build a temple upon the holy mount. That's Mount Zion. Go ahead. And an altar in the city wherein thou dwellest. Come on. A resemblance of the holy tabernacle, which thou hast prepared from the beginning. Okay, that's a different topic altogether. I'm not going to touch that. He says, thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians 3, verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? What did he say? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? You, you Corinthians, meaning you Israelites, you are the temple of God. 
Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 8. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 8. Come on. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. Stop right there. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. That temple today is us because the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by Titus and Vespasian. Okay? Go back to 1 Corinthians 3, 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. We are the temple now. Now we are the temple. We are the temple. So when it says thou has commanded me to build thy temple upon the temp a temple upon thy holy mount, is talking about the building of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay, come on. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. The spirit of God dwelleth in you. You see that word again? The spirit. The spirit of wisdom dwells in us. The spirit of wisdom dwells in us. That's why we are the temple now. And we must be built. And we have to be built spiritually to build the spiritual house, the spiritual temple. Go ahead. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Read. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. The temple of God is holy. The temple of God is holy. Give me that in Romans 7 verse 12. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Romans 7 verse 12. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Come on. Therefore, the law is holy. The what? The law is holy. So when it says that the temple of God is holy, Meaning what? The temple of God is lawful. It's about the law. The temple of God is a spiritual temple right now. The, spirit, the, the temple of God is spiritual. That's what he's saying right there. For the temple of God is holy. Because the law is holy. Come on. Wherefore, the law is holy. And the commandment holy. And the commandment and is, just Hold on. The commandment of God is holy. The laws of God is holy. The commandments of God is holy. Go back to where was that? First Corinthians 3, verse, 6, verse 17 again. Chapter 3, verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You see that thing? For the temple of God is holy. For the temple of God is spiritual, which temple you are, because we are spirit. And the most that God is the father of spirit. When we are spiritually minded, God is our father. When we are carnally minded, Satan is our father. It's that simple. Because those that are spiritually minded, guess what they're going to they, they, guess what they're going to open their minds to? Give me that in John chapter 8. John 8, verse 47. John chapter 8, verse 47. Read. He that is of God heareth God's words. You see that thing? He that is of God heareth God's words. If you are of God, you're going to hear the word of God. If you are spiritual, you're going to hear spiritual things. Come on. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You see that thing? is that simple. It says, ye therefore hear them not. You don't hear God's word because you are not of God. Jump up to verse 44. Watch this. John chapter 8 verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. You see that thing? Because if you are not of God, if you don't hear the word of God, you are not of God. You are of your father, the devil. Read that again. John chapter 8, verse 44. Mm -hmm. Ye are of your father, the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil. Go ahead. And the lust of your father, you will do. What is the lust of, well, what is the lust? What is the lust talking about? Rebellion. Rebellion. Hatred of God's laws. Hatred towards order. 
order is like kryptonite to them. You understand? Structure is kryptonite to them. That's why it says, and the last of your father you would do. That's what happened to Cain. Okay, he hated order. Cain was self-willed. Really? He was a murderer from the beginning. He hated his brother. Come on. And abode not in the truth. You see that part right there? He did not abide in the truth. Meaning the truth of God was not in him. The spirit of God was not formed in him to do good. But he was, the spirit of evil jumped on him. Come on. And the spirit of God fled. Read. John chapter 8 verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. Mm -hmm. And the lust of your father you will do. The last of your father you will do. The last of your father you will do. He's going to explain to you what that last is. Come on. He was a murderer from the beginning. That's the last. Hatred. Hatred is a last. Last. Okay. Hatred is a last. Come on. And abode not in the truth. They did not abide in the truth because the truth of God could not be retained in their broken vessel, which is their mind. Go ahead. Because there is no truth in him. Because the laws of God is not in them. Because if the laws of God is in you, you are going to be spiritually minded. Wait. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. You see that thing? When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Read. For he is a liar and the father of it. He is a liar and the father of it. Watch this. Um, let's go back. Let's go back to where we were at. Go back to John. I'm in First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. Read verse 17 again. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So now go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 8. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 8. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. You see that thing? So this temple is talking about what? The 12 tribes of Israel. Because now we are the temple. We are the temple. When it says thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount, Mount Zion. Okay, we are Mount Zion. Go ahead. And an altar in the city wherein thou dwellest, mm -hmm. a resemblance of the holy tabernacle, which thou hast prepared from the beginning. Come on. And wisdom was with thee. And what? And wisdom was with thee. And wisdom was with the most, well, wisdom was with the most high. Wisdom was with thee. Go ahead. Which knoweth thy works. Which does what? Which knoweth thy works. Which knoweth the works of the Lord. Come on. Which knoweth thy works and was present when thou madest the world. And was what? And was present when thou madest the world. When you builded the world. When you were ordering the 12 tribes of Israel. When you are building the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. It says wisdom was present with thee. You see that part right there? Verse 8. Is supported in verse 9. So when it says, Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount, verse 9 says, um, And was present when thou madest the world. Wisdom of the Lord was present when the when the world was created. First and foremost, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, the sons of God. Okay? When it says, Made is the world, that's the building process. Okay, come on. And was present when thou madest the world. And knew what was acceptable in thy sight mm -hmm. and right in thy commandments. Next verse. Watch this. Oh, send her out of thy holy heavens mm -hmm. and from the throne of thy glory, that being present she may lay, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. Okay, read verse 10 again because you're breaking up. Read verse 10 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 10. O oh, send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory, mm -hmm. that being present, 
he may labor with me he may what that i may know what is pleasing unto thee that she may that it says that, that being he, present she may labor being present she may labor with me so the wisdom of the most high god labors with us that's a heavy thing right there read verse 8 and 10 together okay wisdom of solomon chapter 9 verse 8 that was commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. Stop right there. And read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 8. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. Stop. Jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. O send her out of thy holy heavens and from thy, the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me. She may build with me. Being present, the wisdom of the Lord, when it's present, she will labor with you. Right now, the wisdom of the Lord is laboring with us to build the 12 tribes of Israel, to bring our sons and daughters into this truth. The wisdom of the Most High God is laboring with us. That's a heavy thing right there. That's an honor. That's a gift. That is mercy from the majesty on high. Read verse 8 and 10 together once again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 8. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. Jump down oh, send her, oh, send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory, mm -hmm. that being present, she may labor with me. Come on. That I may know what is pleasing unto thee. Because when the wisdom of the Lord is present and is laboring with us in the building process, we are going to know what is pleasing in unto the Lord. We are going to know what is pleasing in the sight of the Most High God. And the Lord will increase and bless us as we are building the spirits that are coming in. And the building process starts with the spirits that are currently in the congregation. The building process starts with the spirits that are in the congregation right now. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter First Corinthians. three, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine. For we are laborers together with God. We are what? For we are laborers together with God. We are laborers together with God. We are laborers. Remember, the wisdom of the Lord, when it's present with us, when, when it's present, it labors with us. So when it says we are laborers together with God because the Spirit of God is with us, the Spirit of God is within us to labor so that we may know what is acceptable in the sight of the Most High God. So as we are building, the Spirit coming in and you brothers are building yourself up according to the classes coming out because that's the Spirit of the Lord building you up. Your job is to study and apply that which you have been taught. That's your job. Okay, read that again. Because if you don't apply, here's the thing. If you, you just read, if you just sit down, be making notes, but you don't study, you don't, most importantly above all, you don't apply that which you study. Guess what? The wisdom of the Lord will not be present with you to labor with you. You're just wasting your time. I'm going to tell you straight up. Read that again. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, mm -hmm. ye are God's building. We are God's building. You see that part? Husbandry goes into farming. Okay? We are God's husbandry. We are, ye are God's building. That's why he was talking about what? The building up process. The laboring process. You understand? We are, lab we are, we, we are laboring together with the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is laboring with us. That's how we know what is acceptable in the, in the sight of the Most High. Okay, come on. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto, unto me, uh -huh. as a wise master builder. You see that thing? As a wise master builder. So the Apostle Paul is saying, listen, I am building, you understand, together with the Lord, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. The Apostle Paul was a wise master builder. He's telling you that he's a wise master builder. How did he become this wise master builder? 
Give me that in First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. Mm -hmm. Be ye followers of me. Come on. Even as I also am of Christ. You see that thing? Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Because the apostle Paul was following after Christ's footsteps, how he was building. Remember, Christ is the master. He is the master teacher. He is the master builder. So the apostle Paul followed after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we are raising up, you men, you are going to be building according to those that came before you. But some of you don't see us like that. You don't see the men that the Lord has built over you as the wise master builders to build you up. Instead, you are focusing on carnal things. I don't like the way he's talking to me. Who do you think he is? You're not going to be able to be a leader set up in Israel. I'm going to tell you right now. If you have that spirit, you better let it go. If you cannot let it go, you can keep it moving. Okay? The reason why we have to do this is because this is serious business that is going on here. We need to wake up our people and build the 12 tribes of Israel. And I need you men to be ready for what's coming. I need you sisters to be ready for what's coming. Understand that. Okay? Read that again, verse 10. First, first Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, uh -huh. I have laid the foundation. Come on. And another buildeth thereon. Wait, wait. But let every man take heed now he buildeth thereupon. He says, let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. So the Apostle Paul says, I have laid the foundation. Because he was laying the foundation going to different churches. Corinth was one of them. And guess who came after him? He says, another buildeth thereon. Apollos. Apollos was water. He laid the foundation. Apollo was building upon the foundation that he set. And guess what? The foundation that the Apostle Paul was building upon, that foundation was Christ. You understand? That's the same thing. The same thing our forefathers was doing back then. That is what we're doing right now. And I need you men to see this thing. Read it again. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master, builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. Read. But let every man take heed how he buildeth he says, thereupon. He says, let, but, but, he says, but, now he's warning us. He says, but, let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. Meaning what? You need to be very careful on how you build. What is he talking about? The doctrine. The doctrine that is being taught must be the doctrine, the true doctrine of Christ, the true gospel of Christ. There's many Israelite camps out there, but not, in, not, not all of them are teaching the true doctrine of Christ. Very few are teaching the, the true gospel, but the majority of them, they are not. So he, that's why he says, but let every man take heed how he buildeth their, their poor. That's why I tell you, I get on you, brother. When you come in with some strange doctrine, moving in some other way, I'm going to check you. Because I need to make sure that we understand how we must build their poor. According to the scriptures, and the secret source is the application of God's laws. That's the secret source. And the way you apply, you must be taught how to. Don't just assume that you know when you don't know nothing. Because the spirits are on the line here. The spirits of old are coming back. You have to be really, really, really dumb and selfish to think that the Abrahams are not coming back. The Micah are not coming back. The Isaac, the Jacobs are not coming back. You have to be really like, you have to be, you have to be dumb as a donor. That's why when I hear some if or wait of some evil doctrine, I'm going to jump on you like a fly on duty. Understand that? Because I need, we need to protect the purity of the doctrine. I don't care about how you feel. All I care is about what the Lord says. And if the, what's coming out of your mouth is as it is written, and the scriptures are rightly divided. Give me that in Second uh, Timothy. Okay? There's a reason why he's saying what he's saying is there. There's a specific word I'm looking for. Okay. Second Timothy 2, verse 15. 
Read that. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Read. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Come on. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Read. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What, what did he say? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly. You see that word right there? Rightly. He didn't just say dividing the word of truth. Anybody can divide it, but are they dividing it the right way? That's the question. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly. Precept upon precept, are the precepts lining up? Because what I picked up at camp as well, brothers, brothers being selfless, coming up with a new precept, you understand? Because you think this is about you. Just carnally minded. Okay? You see a word that seems to look like it, that's what it says. No, it, 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 it matches the word that I saw in that scripture. Then that means this is a precept. No. Just because it's the same wording, it doesn't mean it's a precept. It, it, it lines up, that's the right precept for it. No, no, no. The reason why you cannot discern that is because you are still carnally minded. So we need to be very careful on how we build. That's why I get on you, brother. I don't care how you feel. No, because they, they don't understand me. It's because I was trying to... Mm -mm. This is not about you. This is about the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, that's why when I give you an assignment, this is what you're going to teach. Follow the precepts exactly because I want to see if you're going to be able to deal with that topic because it's not about you. A lot of you, when you are given topics at class to teach, when I say, okay, on the seat, you're going to be teaching you this, this topic. Now, the brother is coming up with new precepts. But you still don't even have that, you don't have the topic on lock. Okay? You don't have the topic on lock yet. You are training. So instead of humbling down and doing that, why some of you, I'm going to put down. Because you don't take this serious. You think this is about you. You think how many precepts you can pull and all of that and be clever and look smart. No, you're not in the right spirit. You don't understand what this is about. Okay? Because I've seen this before. There was brothers up in here. We go to camp. They come up with their own thing. Where they at? They are gone. Are they doing anything out there? Nothing. Because they thought this was, this was about them. This is not about you. So you brothers that are teaching on the streets, understand that. If I hear anything that goes out, I'm going to take you down. You sit over there until you are ready. Because I want the people to be able to receive the gospel. Not how well you're clever, you can mix the words. No, no. Mm -mm. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And the scriptures must line up. The reason why you are given the precept is not because we just pull in precepts. No, no. There's a reason why we are pulling those pieces and they are paired together like that. There's a specific reason for it. Rightly, read that verse again. Verse 15. Take it, Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Watch this. Next verse, because this is what I'm hearing when I'm at camp. That's why now I need to be very, very careful and very, very diligent and watch each and everything that comes out of your mouth. Read verse 16. Verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings. You got the greatest knowledge on earth, but you are doing what? What's coming out of your mouth is vain babbling. Okay, that's what I'm that's what I'm hearing from a lot of you now when you teach. That thing has to stop. Okay? It needs to stop. That's why Camp 101 is coming. We gonna, I want to make sure that this thing, that I want to hear that stuff in you. I don't want to see vain babbling. I don't want to see that. When you're given no, this is what you're going to go over. You better make sure that you go over it exactly. Because I want to make sure that you can deal and handle the topic and be able to make it plain so that people can understand. You understand? I don't want to hear your words. You'll be running your mouth. There's no scripture. I don't want to hear that no more. Okay? Read that again. 
2 Timothy 2 verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. That's why I have to get on you, brother. It says, because they will increase unto more ungodliness. So that's not going to go down on my watch. That's not happening. It's not going to happen. Because a lot of you, you are lifted up with pride. Now, Satan, say you, are in the, you are in the realm of Satan now. Let's see, let's see, be lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. And some of you, I told you about this, but you're still doing it. Okay? Because you think this is about you. You, have, you are lifted up now with pride. Remember what Saul, what, what Saul told, what Samuel Saul told Saul. Saul had the spirit of pride on him. Guess what happened when the Lord was like, to hell with this guy. I don't want to use him no more. Guess who was raised up? King David was raised up. And the Lord said, I'm going to raise up somebody better than you to replace you. Some of you, when you teach, you think this is about you. So guess what you do? You run your mouth, and I tell you, you still do it. You come up with new precepts, trying to be clever. That's the spirit of pride. You are lifted up with pride. You are falling with the, under the condemnation of the devil. And you will increase unto more ungodliness. That will not be allowed to continue any longer. I hope I'm making myself clear. Okay? I need everybody to understand this thing. You, brother. We need to make sure that the, the gospel that goes out is the gospel of Christ. So we can be able to teach beyond, outside, the, to push the gospel beyond our borders. Imagine we go to Mozambique and the brothers are moving in the spirit of Christ thinking this is about you. How is the people in Mozambique, our people over there, going to be able to hear the true gospel? This is not about you. Okay, that thing really turns my stomach because I keep saying the same thing over and over. Now I'm going to do some things that you're not going to like and I don't, I don't want to, I don't care. I'm going to do things that you're not going to be pleased with. When it comes, I'm going to pull you down and say, you sit right there. Okay, until you get your mind right. Because a lot of you, you think this is your mama's house. No, no, no. Mm -mm. This is the house of Israel. Men will be set up according to the wisdom of the Lord. Not according to your feelings. I hope I'm making myself clear on this one. All right, the spirit just jumped on me. The spirit just jumped on me on this day. Okay, it has to be brought out. Watch this. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. Once again, because the apostle Paul, he warned us about this thing. Because these are the things that was going on in Corinth. If you read from verse 1 down, you will notice that there was a lot of division in the church of Corinth because there was spirit of, of, of strife, there was spirit of envy, you understand? There was, spirit, there was a spirit of division, all of them. That's why the apostle Paul had to bring this out on them. Read them. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Mm -hmm. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. Come on. But let, he, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. You see that thing? He says, as a wise master builder. A wise master builder, they will do what? They will with you. They're going to use wisdom to build. A wise master builder, what are they using to build? They are using wisdom to build this thing. You're not using your emotions. Or your carnal mind. No, your wisdom, you are using the spirit of the, the spirit of wisdom that the Lord has bestowed of you. The spirit of wisdom. So when you are given an assignment, you say, okay, this is what you're going to teach. These are the notes. Guess what you are being given? You are being given the spirit of the Lord. You think the spirit of the Lord is going to come down from heaven and jump on you? No, that's not how it works. You need to be taught. That's why, how can I understand except some man should guide you? But some of you, you just want to jump that whole thing. You want to jump all of that. You want to use some shortcuts. We need to use, we, are, we have to use wisdom to build. This is not a physical fight. It's a spiritual war. We need to use wisdom to build. That's why the Apostle Paul says, let every man do what? But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. You must be very careful on how you build. Watch this. 
Give me the book of Matthew chapter 7. You know what? Give me Jeremiah 1 verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations mm -hmm. and over the kingdoms. Come on. To root out. Stop. And uh -huh. to pull. Hold on. To root out. Some of you are good at that. You are good at rooting out. Really? To root out mm -hmm. and to pull down. To pull down. You are good at pulling down. Go ahead. And to destroy. To destroy a spirit because you have to bring you have to break them down and, and what? Read on. And to throw down. Meaning what? You must bring down and pull down all the evils that is in their mind. This is the part that many of you brothers, you don't know how to do yet. Okay? Instead of following the instructions to the T, you are, you are very good at pulling down, rooting out, pulling down, destroying, and throwing down. Here's the point. Here's the part that we want to focus on. To what? To build. Uh -huh. And to plant. They, 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 to do this, that takes wisdom to do this thing right here. It takes wisdom to do these two things right here. To build and to plant, it takes wisdom to do that. That's why the Apostle Paul said, as a wise master builder, the way you teach has to change. You see, the teaching must evolve now. That's what I was telling you, brothers. You need to really identify the problem. You understand? Explain the root cause and provide solution. That's the model of how you teach. State the problem, state the cause, and give the solution. That's how you teach. You understand? And the way in which you teach, you must have tact when you teach. You must teach with tact, with wisdom. So the reason why I'm giving you topics to teach is I can teach you so you can get used to teaching. Now it's time to start to know how to build. And a lot of you brothers, you stumble at that because your spirit, your mind is not right. Because the reason why it's difficult for you to build is because you're not applying. You're not applying the scriptures to your life. Because if you're applying the scriptures to your life, you're going to know how to build. Because you're examining yourself and you're repenting. You're applying God's commandment. That's why if you're applying, it's going to be easy for you to provide solutions. But because you don't apply, it's difficult for you. When I say teach like this, no, you don't bring the scriptures up like this. Bring it like this. You just bring it another way because you don't apply. So it's difficult for you to be able to provide the solutions because you, can, you are unprofitable to yourself. You study, you, are, you read, you teach many, but you are unprofitable to yourself. So are you ready to go out there to reprove the people? No, you're not. But some of you think you are because you are allowed to teach. No, the reason why I'm allowing you, you brothers to teach is because I want to build you up. I want to mold you. But some of you, you are very self-willed. You are going to what? You might be appointed to do what? To reject this truth and end up in the world. Only the Lord knows that. But as long as you are resistant to be molded and be built up, you might end up being the one that actually was not the vessels of righteousness was the vessel was you you be used as an example of what not to do to be somebody else's benefit so you're gonna choose which one you're gonna be you must make that decision but the mission is a goal so when we when I give you brothers topics you better make sure that you stay on topic follow the precepts connect them the right way the reason why they are put together like that is because they join one to another. They are rightly divided, precept upon precept. When you come up with your own things, now you are going against the order. Now we have a problem. Okay? Read that part again. To build and to what? To build and to plant. To build and to plant. Watch this. Give me Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. It says, take heed how you build as their own. Okay? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Watch this. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. Come on. 
built his house upon a rock. Which did what? Which built his house upon a rock. Which built his house upon a rock. Which built his house upon a rock. So this is about the building. He says, take heed how you build thereon. You must take heed. You must be very careful on how you build. And it's very easy to build the wrong way. Very easy. It's very hard to build the right way because it requires diligence. It requires dedication. It requires consistency. You have to be very careful. You have to move with patience and caution. You understand? That's how you build. That's how you build the right way. You don't move with haste. You move with caution and wisdom. That's how you build the right way. You understand the subtleties of things. They change in a few. You, you understand such subtle changes in the system. You can pick it up. Hmm, something going on there. This is the impact it's going to cause. You see, as you are upcoming leaders, you need to be able to understand impact. You need, you need to know how to do impact analysis. To analyze the impact of the decision you make. The impact of how you teach. How you build. You need to understand that. What is the impact? A lot of you, you don't think about that. I'm seeing you brothers coming in. There was a brother that was teaching at camp. That brother, if he keeps moving, that brother has a potential to be one of the greatest teachers in Israel. I saw that thing. Okay? He is like King David with a mic. Okay? So if he can just keep on doing that, listen, the most High God will definitely develop good fruit out of that brother right there. Okay? Read that again, verse 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, he will, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Which built his house upon a rock. Come on. And the rain descended. And the rain and descended. The these, these are problems now coming in. And the rain descended. Okay, go ahead. And the floods came. Mm -hmm. And the winds blew. Come on. And beat upon that house. Mm -hmm. And it fell not. Come on. For it was founded upon a rock. You see that thing? That's why it says, take heed how you build. You must take heed how you build. Understand that. If you're self-willed, you're not going to learn nothing in this school. If you think you're smart, you are not going to learn anything in this school. Next verse. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Upon the sand. Upon the sand. They built their house upon sand. Meaning the foundation is not what? The foundation is not Christ. Because if the foundation is Christ, you're going to what? Christ was the master teacher. That's why it says, in your patience, possess your soul. Because this is a, the race that you run with patience. You, this is not the race that you run with hate. You run this race with patience. Okay? Because patience, when you are patient, you are able to examine things. You are able to examine the decisions you make. You are able to see um, the impact of the decisions you make, how you build, you'll be able to see that. But when you are building with haste, you are going to be building that thing on sand. And when the rain and the flood come, they will be destroy that house quick. Come on. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And you see that thing? And great was the fall of it. Meaning everyone was aware of it. Everyone knew. He says great was the fall of it. Because it was, it, it was great. It looked great. But guess what? When it fell, nobody could believe it. And, but everybody was, was aware of it. Everybody knew when it came down. So we just need to understand the importance of what? Of how we build. That's why the Apostle Paul had to bring this thing in. You understand? Take heed on how you build. Go back to First Corinthians. And that goes for not just for the brothers only. It goes for the sisters too. If you sisters, sisters are moving in the spirit of rebellion, disrespect, disdain, shameless, shamelessness, guess what? You're not building the right way. You're not building the right way. You are not building the right way. I sometimes I talk to the sisters, okay? 
Some sisters, when I talk to you, I can pick up. This sister, this sister can does not know how to mind her mouth. I can pick that up. I don't have to talk to you all the time. Okay, some of you, I don't talk to you all the time. You understand? Because you don't see counsel. But when I do, when I, whenever I do talk to you, immediately I can pick up. The conversation doesn't even last long. Immediately I pick up this sister right here. She's not moving in the right spirit. She is still moving with the spirit of disrespect. Guess what? You are not going to make it in this truth if you keep doing that. You will not make it. Understand that you are not going to make it. Okay, First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three and verse ten. Once again. First Corinthians chapter three verse ten. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Come on. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Read. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Read. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You see that thing? There's no, you cannot, you cannot go around Christ. Because Christ taught the right doctrine. The true gospel of Christ, he rightly divided the world of truth, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And it was sound doctrine, the law, and how to apply it the right way. Because there is applying the law, but there is also how do you apply it. Are you applying it the right way? That's another thing. That's why it says, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. Meaning what? Christ. Christ is the foundation that we are building upon. Go ahead. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, mm -hmm. gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Wood, hay, stubble. So the foundation that we must build upon, he's telling you what that foundation is. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, precious stones, that's the foundation we must build upon. Wood, hay, and stubble, that's the foundation that we are not supposed to build upon. Okay? Give me that in Matthew. Go back to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 26. Watch this. The wood, the hay, and the stubble, this is what Christ just explained to us here in Matthew 7, verse 26. Read that. Matthew chapter 7, verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man mm -hmm. which built his house upon the sand. You see that thing? Which built his house upon the sand. Wood, hay, stubble. Read. And the rain descended, and mm -hmm. the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You see that part right there? Because you are building on wood, hay, and stubble. When trouble comes, guess what? You are not going to make it. Because the way you build, you didn't build the correct way. You didn't build the right way. That foundation was not founded on Christ. You didn't build your house upon the rock. Christ was not the foundation. Okay, that's why that great the the the, the trouble will trouble will come. That house will not survive. Okay, go back to First Corinthians chapter three, verse twelve once again. First Corinthians chapter three, verse twelve. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Now, watch this. Give me that in 2 Timothy 2, verse 12. Okay? Because guess what? When we are building, we're building spirit in the spirit of Christ. The spirit of wisdom is what is building the spirit. Because the most High God, he is the father of spirit. This is a spiritual thing. But we need to be able to identify how we must build. We need to know that. And what we are using to build what we are building. We must know how to build, to, to, to do construction, and what material we are using to construct this house so that we know that it will be sustainable. We need to understand the foundation. If the foundation is strong, you can put anything on top of it. If the foundation is weak, it will not be able to hold much. When you start to add the more, it will collapse. Okay? Read that, Second Timothy 2, verse 20. 
second Timothy chapter two verse twenty. But in a great house, there are there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. You see that thing. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold. This house, this great house, is the great house of the name of the nation of Israel. This great house is the house of Israel. He says, not only will you find vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. That goes into what? Different congregations like Israel can, but it also goes into what? Different spirits in the congregation. You understand? It goes into different spirits in the congregation. You see that thing? Read the part again, verse 20. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, mm -hmm. and some to honor and some to dishonor. So the gold and the silver, that's the honorable vessel. The wood and the earth, that's the dishonorable vessel. You see that thing? They are not going to build the right way. They are going to build their house upon sand. But the gold and the silver, they will build their house upon a rock, which is Christ. That is what the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy here. Okay, come on, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these. Stop right there. If a man therefore purge himself from these, the wood and the earth, okay, the hay and the stubble, you purge yourself from these. Come on, these materials, because how you build and what material you're using to build will determine the strength or the weakness of that house based on the trials or the, the, the external factors that will affect how the, whether the house will withstand or not. Read. He shall be a vessel unto honor. He shall be a what? Thank he shall be a vessel unto honor. That's why the Apostle Paul says, take heed how every man builds their upon. He says, if you purge yourself from these, the wood, the earth, the hand, the stubble, guess what? He says, you are going to be a vessel unto honor. Come on. Sanctified. Sanctified. And me Hold on. Sanctified, meaning what? You are sanctified with the word of God, according to John 17, 17. Read on. Sanctified and meet for the master's use. You see that thing? And meat and good. And good for the master's use. Who's the master? Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Read. And meat for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. And prepared unto every good work. So when you purge yourself from the wood and the earth, the hand of the guess what? You are going to be a vessel of honor that it will be sanctified, meaning what? You keep the commandments of the Most High God. You have the spirit of wisdom on you. And you are good for the master's use. And you are prepared for every good work. Go back to where he was at now. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Once again. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, now, I'll give an example. You see, brothers and all sisters that are always questioning everything, and when I say questioning everything, I'm not talking about those brothers and sisters that are genuinely asking a question. I don't understand what that this scripture means. You give them the answer, they get the sense, okay, understand now. I'm talking about those brothers that they are asking questions because they are what? They have the spirit of doubt. Those brothers and all sisters, those brothers right there, those are the hay, the wood, the earth, and the stuff. Those are going to be the, those are the vessels of dishonor because they have the spirit of doubt. They are doubtful. They're on a faith. They don't have faith. So they are not building the right way. Although they are given the right, the, the, the way, the right way to build and what type of material to use to build the house, they just ignore it. They don't use that. They're coming up with their own way because they have the spirit of doubt on them. They are not building on, they are building that house on sand and it will collapse if they don't take heed. 
to examine what they are building, okay, and what they are building upon. Okay, read on, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. You see that part right there? Every man's work shall be made manifest, meaning it's going to be revealed. Go ahead. For the day he shall declare it. The day of Christ shall declare it. Okay, come on. Because it shall be revealed by fire. He shall be what? It shall be revealed by fire. That's the rain, the storm. That's the trial. Okay? It shall be revealed by fire. Because it is built upon the foundation of the apostles. Guess what? Hmm. Watch this. Jump back up to verse 12. We're coming back here. Read verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So now we read in 2 Timothy 2, verse 20, what the type of vessels we must use to build, the type of material we must use to build the house, to build the spirit, gold and silver and precious stones. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians. No, no. Luke. What I want to focus on now is I want to show you some more. If your house is built with wood, hay, and stubble, this is what happens. Luke 14, verse 28. If you build with wood, hay, and stubble, this is what happens. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. The book of Luke chapter 14, verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first mm -hmm. and counteth the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it you see that thing which one of you is intending to build a tower what tower is this a tower of righteousness because that's what you are saying when you come into this school you're saying i want to build a tower of righteousness okay it says sit not down first meaning you don't sit down to count the cost what is going to take the, the sacrifices you're going to have to make in this tooth to get to to push this tooth forward you're gonna have to sacrifice your money your time okay you're gonna sacrifice the resources that you got you're gonna sacrifice sleep you're gonna sacrifice a lot of things for this tooth to go out understand that so it says you intending to build a tower but you don't sit down to count the cost whether you have enough to finish it whether you have the spirit to finish this thing are you going to endure until the end? That's what he's saying. Whether you're going to have enough sufficient, sufficient to finish it. Next verse. Verse 29. Verse 29. List happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that behold it begin to mock him. You see what's going to happen? Those that see you, that goes with your family members, your mothers, your fathers, your cousins, the people that you used to roll with in the world, when they see you, because it's, it says, after you have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. You understand? All that behold it, because every, by the way, when it says all that behold it, as you are building, everyone is looking at you. And guess what they want you to, they, guess what they are waiting for? They are waiting for you to fall. Understand each and every one of them. Everybody that you know that is not in this suit, they are waiting for you to fall. That's why it says, and all that behold it begin to mock him. Because they were watching you build. They are watching you build. With the minute you stop, guess what's going to happen? They will mock you. They will laugh you. They will laugh at you. You will be a laughing stock. And it will be well deserved because you did not build on the right foundation. You didn't use the proper materials to build the house. Okay, come on. Verse 30. Verse 30. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. You see that thing? This man began to build and was not able to finish. That's embarrassing. You understand? So you have to ask yourself, is this the type of, is this the type of material you want to build with? 
The choice is yours. You must make that decision. Okay? You have to make the decision whether you're going to build with wood, hay, and stubble, or you're going to build with gold and silver. And guess what? If you're going to be building with gold and silver, because think about it. When you set wood on fire, what happens? The flame is great. It's, it's, like, it's like you... It's like... Uh, you're lighting a match and throwing it to paraffin. Paraffin. Because the flame is big and then it quickly just goes up. Quickly. You understand? It, quick, it goes up quickly. But when you throw a fire on it, the paraffin is boom. You see a big flame and then it quickly just dies up. That's what happens. You just look at the uh, wood. Set, set wood on fire. You see how it goes. Once it catches fire, it, like the flame is huge. But it goes. By the time it's done, everything is just ash. It's gone. But when you look at the gold and the silver now, that's a different ball game altogether. It gets melted. You see, that's the beauty of it. Once the gold is melted, the impurities are taken out, and you're not going to take the impurities out on the first round. No, you have to take you, you have to keep taking the gold back into the fire. The first round, you'll take out some impurities out of it, and then guess what? Now it's not the same as it was. Then, then you examine it, you see, okay, there's still some, there's still some soul, there's still some tin inside the gold. I need to throw it back into the fire. It goes in, it burns again. It melts again. Then you look for other impurities. And yet, guess what? The, the gold is still there. It's not gone. Then you have to put it in the third time. So on and so forth. Until it becomes that pure gold. Pure. Pure. Not, yeah, it's good, but, you know, there's just some things. No. Pure gold. Where there's no impurities, nothing. When you touch it, it's smooth, beautiful. That's what the Lord is looking for. That's how you build the diamond. That's the precious stone. Okay? For the diamond to come up, guess what needs to happen? For the diamond to be pushed to the surface, there must be some volcanic eruptions to go on at the bottom for that gold to be popped up. And even at that point when it's popped up, it still needs to be taken to the lab and be washed and be cut so that the pure gold diamond can be found in there. It's a process, okay? But if you want to build on the wood, the hay, the earth and stubble, the choice is yours. And just to, be, to, to put it practical, you don't see cancer, you don't want you you don't want to go you don't want to be married it's that simple you don't see cancer you don't want to be married you study or you read let me put it like that you read you don't ask questions it's the same thing because if you study you will have questions but because you don't study you read that's why you don't have questions your mind is deceived you think things you understand when you don't so guess what that 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 is that is the wood, the hay, and the stuff. But if you're studying and you're applying, you're going to have, you're going to have questions and counsel. Why? Because you have to be put through the fire so you can be melted. A lot of you, you don't want that. You're not ready for this. Okay? You're not ready for this thing. Go back to where was that? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Come on. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So now, when you build the right way, right? When you build the right way, the foundation is Christ. When you build the right way, here's what's going to happen. Give me Ephesians 2, verse 19. Let's start here. Okay. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 19. Come on. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers 
and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. The household of God, the household that needs to be built with the spirit of wisdom that coming from the most high God. Of the with the house and of the household of God, the temple. Go ahead. And are built up and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. You see that thing? Your the true foundation is the one that is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Go ahead. Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. He's the foundation. It is built upon Christ. How is it built upon Christ? It's built upon the things that Christ taught unto us. The laws, the statutes and commandments to quicken us so we can be turned into another man. Right? Verse 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together mm -hmm. groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. You see that thing? In whom? In whom all the building, the building is the 12 tribes of Israel, fitly framed together, growing unto an holy temple into the, in the Lord. So we must what? It says fitly framed together. We must fit together like a puzzle because we are kindred spirits. We move as one, we think as one. We make the same decisions when it comes to the, we understand the scriptures the same way. The doctrine is pure according to the scriptures. We know how to rightly divide the word of truth, precept upon precept. Come on. Verse 22. In whom ye also are built up together for no, no. and have we. Read verse 22 again. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. In whom ye also are built together for an in for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Through the what? Through the Spirit. The only way we are going to be built together for an habitation of God is through the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of Wisdom. The Spirit that's the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of Wisdom is the Spirit of Christ. The only way we are going to be able to build together for at that habitation, to build together as a nation, is through the Spirit of Christ. That's why it says, not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, said the Lord of hosts. That's the only way we are going to be able to build the spirits that are coming in. And the spirits that are, that are already in the congregation. Upon the foundation of Christ. And that foundation is what? Because if you are built upon the foundation of Christ, of the, the apostles, you understand? Of the prophets and the apostles, guess what? Christ being the chief cornerstone, that's talk about the law. Law and order. That's the problem with blacks and Latinos. Hatred of law and order. Okay? That's the problem. Because black men and black women hate law and order. That's why it's difficult for them to build anything that is sustainable. Look at, look at the businesses they start. They don't go anywhere. Because it's not built upon the right foundation. You start something, it doesn't go anywhere. You understand? Why? Because it's not built upon the right foundation. And that foundation being our Lord and Savior, the Christ. Okay? Go back. First Corinthians chapter 3 now. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day he shall declare it. The day of Christ, come on. Because it shall be revealed by fire. It by shall fire. Be what? Because it shall be revealed by fire. Every man's work, man and women in this truth, your work is going to be made manifest. How you build, what type of material you use to build, either way, your work is going to be made manifest. Everyone needs to see how you are built. Are you building the right way as you are instructed or you are doing your own thing? Are you applying as you are instructed or you are doing your own thing? Are you seeking counsel as you should according to the scriptures? Guess what? Men and women, they don't do that. They don't do that thing. That's why we have a problem in the nation of Israel. Okay? Brothers, 
those that are those, those are those that are preparing to be that those that are preparing themselves to be married, those that are married, they don't seek counsel. Sisters that are preparing for preparing themselves to be married or are being proved to be to be married to, they are not seeking counsel, but they are here every day attending class, but they are not seeking counsel about marriage. They are not seeking counsel how to be a good wife. They are not seeking counsel about that. But yet you sit in here saying, I want a Lord. I want to be married. But you don't seek counsel about marriage, how to be, how to conduct yourself in a marriage. Sisters don't do that. So are you building the right way? No, you're not. You're not building the right way. Tell you straight. And guess what? After this class, um, I can tell you now, they are still going to sit in here, look pretty, fold their arm as if the class didn't come out. You're not fooling me, okay? You're not fooling me. You're not fooling the most high. You're just fooling yourself in this truth. I'm gonna tell you straight because a lot of you, you don't hate it. You don't like the truth. You don't like the fact that I bring it the way that it, I'm bringing it out. I don't care. Because your job is to prepare yourself for marriage, to prepare yourself to be a wife, to prepare yourself to be a husband. Okay, the classes that come out, marriage classes that come out and all that, I hardly hear brothers and sisters coming and say, we want to see, we want to set up council because this is the problem we're having in the marriage. How do we deal with it according to the scriptures? How do we deal with it when, how, what, what do we do in situations like this? Nobody's asking those questions. But they think, but they hear they, but this, but you say you're an Israelite, you believe in the Bible, you want a strong marriage. Listen, if you don't do that, you're going to see slaves. I'm telling you straight. Because you take this truth for a joke. This is not a game. It says, every man's work shall be revealed by what? Read the 13 again. First Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Because it shall be what? Because it shall be revealed by fire. Because it shall be revealed by fire. Why is he saying the fire is the trial? You understand? This is the spiritual fire he's talking about here. The word of God, the spiritual fire. Okay, watch this. Jeremiah 5, 14. We're coming back here. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. It says, it shall be revealed by fire. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, and behold, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. In thy mouth, what? In thy mouth, fire. So the words that you will put in our mouth will be fire. He says, I will make my words in thy mouth, fire. Come on. And this people would. And this people what? And this people would. Because if you are building upon what? If you are building on wood, hay, earth, and stubble, here's what's going to happen. Read on. And it shall devour them. You are going to be devoured because you're not building with the right thing. When the word of God comes, it's going to destroy you. It's going to devour you like fire to wood. The same way fire consumes wood, just like that, like it's nothing, like it's a piece of paper. That's exactly what the word of God will do unto you because you're not building upon the right foundation. You're not building on the right foundation. Okay. Go back to where he was at. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Right now, the trial does the spiritual fire. Right now, does the spiritual fire. Guess what's going to happen when the Lord returns? Right now, the Lord is preparing us for us to be what? To be to be burned with spiritual fire, which is the word of God, so the impurity can be taken out. So that we can what? The Lord is getting ready to deliver us 
out of that literal fire, which is what? When the nuclear bombs are going to hit this earth. That's the literal fire that's coming. But before we can detect, we can go through that literal fire, we must go through the spiritual fire first. That's what this whole thing is about. That's why the Apostle Paul said, take heed how you build the apostle. Okay? Give me that in Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, start at verse 11. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Read. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Come on. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. That's Jesus the Christ. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Come on. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and with fire. You see that thing? Christ is going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost. That's the law. Go ahead. And with what? And with fire. That's the nuclear bombs. So the Apostle John was telling us, listen, the man that's coming after me, he, is, he listen, I cannot even wear his shoes. I'm not worthy to put on his shoes. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Right now we are being baptized with the Holy Ghost, the laws of God. Then after that, we are going to be baptized with fire. Those that will be baptized with fire is those that are going to what? That are going to burn. And those that will go through the fire is those that will make it into the wilderness. Okay, come on. Verse 12. Verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. You see that thing? He will burn up the chaff. The chaff is those what? Is those our people that did not believe this truth. He says, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's the nuclear bombs. The lake of fire that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Hmm. So that nuclear fire, that nuclear fire that's coming. That's some heavy stuff. That's the nuclear fire, and there's another fire that you're going to be in. That we shall be forever. So what we need to understand is that when it says, because it shall be revealed by fire, let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. That's the fire, that's the trial, that's the spiritual fire, the laws of God, and that also goes into the literal fire. Come on. And the fire shall try every man's work of what, of what sort it is. You see that thing? The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Right now, that's what's going on. Some of you don't see that because it's one ear of the other. Go ahead. Verse 14. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. You see that thing? If your, if your work, if you will enjoy, because what he's saying here is says, give me Matthew 24. Let's get Matthew, okay? Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. Read that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. Come on. But he that shall endure unto the end, mm -hmm. the same shall be saved. The same shall be what? The same shall be saved. That's the reward that you're going to get. If you, if you endure unto the end, the same you are going to get delivered if you endure unto the end. Go back to where was that? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If your work abide, you see that thing? It, it says, if your work abide until the Lord returns, guess what? You're going to receive a reward because you've endured unto the end. You were tried and you overcame your trial. You're going to get a reward. The kingdom. Okay, come on. 
if any man's work shall be buried, he shall suffer loss. He shall what? But he, he shall suffer loss. He shall suffer loss. Read that part again. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Mm -hmm. Come on. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. You see that thing? It says, if any man's work shall be if any man's work shall be burned, he shall, shall he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. That's talking about the one that will get the reward. The one that will get the reward will be delivered. You understand? Yet so as by fire, they are going to be delivered through that fire. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying right here. You are going to be delivered through that fire. But if your work is burned, because you're the temple, you are the building that is being built here, the spiritual temple that is being built, yes. If it is if that is destroyed, meaning what you are unable to endure the trial, guess what? You're gonna suffer loss. Loss of what? The kingdom. You will not get the kingdom, you say. That's some heavy stuff right there. You will not get the kingdom because you did not build the right way. You did not use the right materials to build. And the most high God is about building the 12 tribes of Israel. And the way you build. The wisdom of the Lord must labor with you in the building process. A lot of you, you don't want your own counsel. You, you, you become a professional student because I've just been quiet. I've been talking, I've talked about, about the four chapters for a while now. I have not been talking about them. But many of you, the majority of you, in fact, more than 80% of you, you don't seek counsel. You don't ask no questions nothing you just come to class like i don't know why you'd be doing this i don't really i don't get it why would you be standing up on, uh, after after uh, after work you are you are up until 10 o'clock half past 10 but you don't see counsel you don't ask questions that doesn't make any sense does that make any sense that no, no that don't make no sense okay because the word of god is supposed to give you sense but for some ungodly reason, give me that in Nehemiah 8 and 8, because this is what the word of God is supposed to do. Okay? But somehow, that's not happening. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8. Come on. So they read in the book of the, in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense. Read. And caused him to understand the reading. You see that thing? Sense. That is what the Lord is giving us, sense, through his law, statutes, and commands. Okay? The most that God is giving us sense through his law, statutes, and commands. Give me Proverbs chapter 11. Now that, now that we are on this, let me just touch on this. Okay? He says, take heed how you build. Um, Proverbs chapter 11 verse 14. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You see that thing? That's clear. Where no counsel is, where no counsel is, the people fall. If you don't seek counsel, you're going to fall out. You are going to fall out of this truth. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety in counseling. You are going to be saved. Because you're not going to be what? You're not going to be operating your life without a guide. But right now, many of you, that's what you are doing. But you want to make you, you want to get married. You want to be a, you want to be leaders in Israel. You want to be fathers, you want to be husbands. But guess what? You don't seek counsel about these things. You just sit there looking pretty. Okay. Sit there looking. Just being a professional student, not really taking heed what this is about. Because you really, when you don't see counsel, that lets me know you're not ready to, to wake up the 12 tribes. You're not ready to guide the 12 tribes of this. You're not. If you don't see counsel, what makes you think you're going to be able to know how to break down the scriptures to give somebody else counsel? 
That doesn't make any sense. Does that make sense, you men? No, sir. It doesn't make any sense. But somehow, that's not happening. Read verse 14 again. Come on, Proverbs 11, verse 14. Read that. Proverbs 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Watch this. Um, yeah, that's it on that. That's it on that. I don't want to be a dead cat. Okay? I'm going to leave that thing right there where it is. Those that will seek counsel, you know where to find it. Okay? Those that are seeking, those that are actively counseling, all praise to the most like God. Okay? Those that are actively seeking the counsel, they are attending the counseling the sessions that they set up. All praise to the most side for that thing. Okay. Because these are that's why we always make sure that we must pray for believers. Okay. We must pray for believers. Those men and women that are going to come in and do what? And study and apply and seek counsel and prepare themselves to be righteous judges in Israel, to be women of Israel that are going to be able to lead by example, to teach by example. Because women can teach, but they cannot teach the men. They can't teach the congregation, but they can teach other women, though. They can show them the, the right example by their conduct, their dress code, the way they deal with others, the way they teach their children and raise them up and so forth. Yes, the men as well. Those that are serious about this truth, they want to apply. They want to ask questions. They're going to have understanding to be able to guide others. They will, they, will, they will have the wisdom of the Lord upon them to be able to, what, to guide others when it comes to the scripture. That is what we are looking for. That's what the Lord is looking for. Understand that. Give me that in uh, Sirach. Ecclesiasticus, okay? Ecclesiasticus chapter 19. No, no, no. Sirach 9. Sirach 16. Sirach 16 verse 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 16 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children, neither delight in ungodly sons. You see that thing? It says, don't desire a multitude of unprofitable children. It's the Lord says, don't desire that. Don't desire. See, we, listen, since the beginning, I've never been chasing numbers. Never. You understand? When you read through the scriptures, when you look at the Maccabees, okay? Remember what Judah Maccabee told the brothers? It says, it's not a, it's, it's not a, give me that in 1 Maccabees 3, verse 48. 1 Maccabees 3. No, 3, verse 18. 1 Maccabees 3, verse 18. Read that. 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. Unto whom Judas answered, It is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. Come on. And with the God of heaven, it is all one. Mm -hmm. To deliver with a great multitude or a small company. You see that thing? Come on, read on, verse 19. For the victory of the battle standeth not in the multitude of an host, but strength cometh from heaven. But strength cometh from heaven. So it's not about the numbers. No, it's about those few to deliver the, the to, 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 to deliver the nation of Israel. They few to deliver the nation of Israel. It's not about how many people will be able to stand up to teach. No. It's about those that are going to do the work no matter what's going on. They're not going to um they're not going to give up. They are going to do that which is the that which the scripture says. Those are the ones that are going to be approved. But a lot of you you are just here because you think is no if this is a contest well, how many how many classes I can attend? The whole point is not how many classes you can attend, is how many scriptures you can apply. That's the point of this. So don't miss the point. Okay, stay in the spirit. All right. Okay, I'm gonna end the class right here. I'm gonna end the class right there. Okay, let's break bread. Give me first Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. For I have received of the Lord 
that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and, the, and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that class. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High.